What's up, fellow Sambarians? Um, I'm in my shed of exhausts. <laughs> I have an exhaust hoarding problem, as you can see. I hoard a lot of stuff. Mountain bikes, surfboards, skateboards. Oh, man. I think I have a problem. I'm just kidding. I do all that stuff, so of course I'm going to hoard it. Um, okay, so carburetor. This is going to be the part two. Um, I showed taking it apart and I cleaned everything. I got the gasket kits, solenoids, air and fuel, accelerator pump, and, uh, I think that was it. Gaskets, solenoids, accelerator pump. Yeah. So I cleaned everything, put it all back together. Um, I didn't do that great of a job cleaning it. Because honestly, I'm more concerned about the innards and not so much the out, the outers. Um, but, I mean, I went around to all the moving points and I gave them a spot. It, if you ever smelled gun lube, if you've ever owned a gun and cleaned a gun, um, gun lube has a very distinct smell. It smells like gun lube. So I found this 3-in-1 multi-purpose oil. Um, I just kind of put a little drop on all the points that move and turn. So, uh, I mean, this thing is like, it is very, very smooth, very clean. Everything is very clean. So I put it all back together. So now the moment of truth. Um, so like I said, I'm going to have the gasket kits for sale in my store. And then I, you know, if everything goes well. Um, I'm going to try to pick up more of these from Japan and rebuild them and sell them. So if you're not in the mood to take your carburetor apart, um, then I will try selling uh, rebuilt carburetors. And possibly you could send yours in and we could clean it or do a... <sighs> Man, my brain is not working. Do a core charge. Um, so you send one in, that means we get one, we rebuild it, but then we send you one that's already done, kind of a deal. I know that's already been done, GNR Imports does it, and that's great. Um, but I thought, hey, you know, put some more options out there, try to start rebuilding these. Because they're getting older and older, as time goes on, parts are no longer available. I tried to buy a bunch of parts to rebuild the carburetor, and it was available at the time, but um, after I checked... Uh, they all came back no longer in production, which is a huge bummer. So basically nothing except for the solenoids and accelerator pump and gasket kit is available. The piston choke or this, they're called, it's called a piston choke. I think that might be available. I, they gave me an alternate part number. That alternate part number could come back is no longer in production, but they gave me an option. So I bought it. So we'll see what happens. It was like 70 bucks. So I don't know if it's really worth, but just in case piss and choke goes bad um we'll have a replacement because parts are parts are disappearing S slowly but surely parts are disappearing so i am going to i didn't show a video putting it back together because it's basically the same process as taking it apart um i just made sure i cleaned all the surfaces so there's no gasket left the o-rings uh i put a and like an engine building lubricants a white grease I put those on the o-ring so everything went back okay and didn't rip any o-rings the only weird thing is is if you're going to do this yourself just be aware the gasket kit only comes with one o-ring i don't know why but these have two o-rings in there so i took the one that was coming in from the uh from the float bowl which i'm guessing fuel probably runs through there i don't know maybe fuel runs through both of the needles but I just replaced one and then I had, and thank goodness I saved the O-rings and I found a good one and put it on and then just replaced one of them. I'm pretty sure you could probably find these O-rings at like, if you took this to AutoZone, you may be able to find one. That size is very small. Um, but anyways, replace one, keep one. Um, that's what I ended up doing. I'm not sure why. It only comes with one O-ring. It doesn't make sense. But unless maybe they think 
No, because they give you gaskets to take the whole thing apart. So I don't, I don't know why they only give you one O-ring. I would think they'd give you one O-ring because you're only taking the float, the float bowl off or something. But you take the Venturi cover and the float bowl off. So you, you would need to, two O-rings. I don't know. Anyways, I'm learning. And you're going to learn today if you work on these things. Um, so I'm going to show you. We're gonna do a before and hopefully an after um, of how long it takes to start my blue truck because it takes a while and that's why I'm doing this. My white truck takes like a second to start up, my white KS4, but my blue KS4, it, it's struggling. So that's why I thought, hey, let's rebuild the carb, show everyone how to do it, put it on the blue truck and see if it will fire up sooner because that carb is dirty and not running properly. So yeah. Everything's in. There's our new accelerator pump. Our new fuel cutoff solenoid. Which might even be the reason why the blue truck doesn't fire up because we had that issue with cold starts on the fuel cutoff solenoid. So it may just be a bad fuel cutoff solenoid on that blue truck. But I thought, hey, you know what? It's a good learning experience to take a carb apart, rebuild it, and put it on. And then if that's all that was wrong with that one, which we'll never know, and that's totally fine. Um, at least we know that carburetor is good. I'll take that one apart and clean it and have it as a backup or sell it if somebody's in dire need of a carburetor. So yeah, very easy to do that stuff. And I wanna learn something good before I offer services for it. So anyways, got the front cleaned up. I have the gasket kits that go from the intake manifold to the carburetor coming. Um, I only have one at the moment because I bought an engine rebuild gasket set. So it came with that stuff. But uh, I had someone actually ask me today about the gaskets for the intake manifold to the carburetor. So I had to order some up. So that would be good. Um, I'll have those in the store as well. Okay, let's try to get this thing started up and you can see how long it takes to start it and that's you know pumping the pedal and it's a warm day so it might start up sooner but definitely hates the cold days So I took it out back, blew everything off because uh, I left the lid off and stuff was obviously going to fall in there and we want to keep this clean when we take everything off. Um, so this is what we're taking off. We'll take all the hoses. This probably comes from the EVAP canister and then that's goes to the air box because I think that's the fuel, like fuel air and then it burns it off into the carburetor possibly. A um, bunch of vacuum lines, which uh, hopefully that carburetor matches. I should probably double check and make sure all these hose nipples are in the same spot as this one. Or we may end up having to swap parts from this carburetor to that one. Because I think maybe they changed. Um, this looks like the vacuum advance. To the distributor so it's probably got it but let's just start i'm going to start taking stuff off of here and i'm going to film it because i want to make sure when i take it all apart i know how it goes all back together because that's where a lot of people get confused where lines went and that's why it's very important to take pictures or video of removing your carburetor because it gets confusing when you got to put it all back together especially if it's been sitting down for a week or two because you're waiting on parts you forget um so it's just good to video so take lots of pictures so you go oh that's where that hose went and make sure you get it all back together so then it doesn't end up being a bad carburetor because you put the vacuum line in the wrong direction so anyways let's get to it 
Thought I'd give her everyone and their sunshine. An update on some patitos. Go away, poitos. Come on. Yeah, skedaddle, scoot. Canoodle, turn you into chicken noodle. She's uh, she's trying to be a mama, and I'm gonna be a grandpa. <laughs> So I gotta keep the chickens out because they try to attack poor sunshine as she guards her her two little eggies. So she's incubating or nesting or whatever the heck you want to call it, eggs. And there's there's a couple nests up there. Oh, that egg is cropped, so let's see. Oh wait. I thought I saw an egg in there. There's some little birdies nesting up there, but yeah, she's uh, she's got her nest, and we've had to kick the chickens out. The chickens are not happy about it, but they actually started to peck her in this corner, and we caught them pecking her one day, and they actually started to make her bleed. So it was really bad. Very, very upset with that one. She was mostly the one who did it. She gets picked on, so then she feels like she needs to pick on others. It's very frustrating. I guess that's the pecking order. But we kick the chickens out. They sleep in the coop down there. We do not let them in here. I keep sunshine in here during the day. And it's, I'm telling you, birds are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. I know we hunt them and we eat them and that's all good, you know. But we also wanted birds as pets but I get the whole hunting and eating and not caring about birds, that's totally fine. But uh, she's done this thing now where she like chirps. She goes wee wee, like this high pitched chirping noise. She's never done it before. And so I'll keep this thing, I'll keep the coop locked up during the day. So that angry pollito can't get in there and peck her. Cause I think they're pissed. They can't get in there and they don't want her sleeping on any eggs and for a while she was actually sitting on a chicken egg and I think that's what really made him angry is she was accidentally got a chicken egg and was trying to you know incubate it or whatever but obviously it wasn't going to and they're and they know when an egg is fertilized because I'm guessing it doesn't stay warm because they got to stay warm and maybe it wasn't staying warm so eventually she kicked the chicken egg out but she was mad that they, she had a chicken egg but anyways uh sunshine will actually start to chirp so if i'm out here working which you know i do most of my stuff inside parts emails blah 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 and then finally when i get outside um because we keep her locked up in there it's not as bad as it sounds we're just protecting her she'll eventually hop down every once in a while um, if she knows I'm out here and she'll start making chirping noises, so I'll come out and she'll be standing there looking at me like, Hey, you can open up the door. And as soon as I open the door, she flies out, she goes up. I think she does a little mating with the other ducks up there at the, uh, the pool up there. And then she'll walk right back down to the coop. And she'll start chirping when she gets up to the coop and I'll let her in and she hops back up there and just nests on her eggs i mean it's just incredible birds are so cool if you can get ducks and you got land for ducks and you got time they do take a lot of time so don't don't ever buy any animal unless you know you have time to take care of it because that's just messed up to bring something into your life and then just abandon it because oh you don't have time for it make sure you have time for it these ducks they take <laughs> they take up a lot of time I mean, we haven't even gone on any vacations yet because I still have to figure out if we leave, how's that gonna be possible, you know, for someone else to watch them. Cause they free roam all day and I would feel terrible if one got killed and somebody was watching them. Well, it wasn't watching them and one died. I'd be pretty upset. So it's just when I figure out, you know, how they can stay in free range and we can be away, I'll do it. And then we can do some vacations maybe travel to other states see some other k car guys and stuff like that do something fun but they're just the best and we're gonna have little baby ducks pretty soon which is gonna be a, a lot of fun i mean obviously we've had baby ducks before 
but not from the egg. So we're very curious how that happens. Like, do we intervene? Do we just let the eggs, the birds pop out of the egg and then hope the males don't kill them? Cause I, I know the drakes kill baby ducklings. So it's like, do we have to do anything? So it'll be very interesting. See what happens. We've never done this before, but it's just, it's just funny how sunshine chirps at me. Like, Hey, let me out. And I come and let her out and she's happy and flies away and comes back a little bit later. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back to the truck. Okay, so I'm gonna just start taking stuff off slowly, but surely. Um, so, videoing it for my uh, resources later, and then also hopefully uh, and hopefully this is helpful to you later. So we'll take our cover off. This is covering all the choke stuff. So take this hose off, which is obviously some kind of a vacuum, vacuum line or something. So here are all the small little vacuum lines that you would probably want to replace at some point. They look to be okay. So I'm not gonna... I got fuel in the intake. And it'll be interesting to see how bad this carburetor is. But we'll, uh get this out of the way. Okay, so this goes to our vacuum advance. So that one's our vacuum advance for our distributor. I'm not gonna know every single one, so don't ask. And instead of just trying to yank on the hose, it usually needs to be broken loose because it gets, you know, hard and corrodes to the nipple. So if you give it a twist, you can usually just pull it up quite easily afterwards. So this mount is on the, the fresh carburetor so we can get these hoses out of the way duck on there so we'll give it a twisty twister give it a titty twister on the nipple there we go should should come off so yeah that looks good so I'm just gonna take this thing and lay it like the direction of which it's supposed to go and also I have video that's gonna show me how it needs to go back. But that all comes off and over the carburetor. So these, we don't really need to mess with these. Although, they are going to be a little bit in the way. Stick these to the back. This one comes with the intake manifold. And this one comes with the intake manifold. these in the back until they're ready to come back and over so one of them was hooked that thing was hooked if you still have it I just want to get everything out of the way as possible so when we pull the carburetor off we're not fighting any hose lines so now we have the coolant lines running into the choke the chingus so, I'm not sure how much coolant is going to come out of there. I'll probably go open up my radiator cap. Just in case. 
It's pressurized right now because I just drove it. Feels a little warm. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot of pressure came out of that. So we'll see how much coolant spills. Not, not very much. Not bad, not bad at all. This is the shell bit. Mr. Shelby, I need you to remove the coolant lines, Mr. Shelby. If you don't, Mr. Shelby, I'm gonna have a problem, Mr. Shelby. Come on, baby. Oh. Okay. Coolant lines removed. I did do a thermostat on this one, so I do have a new thermostat. There is a thermo valve, a two post thermo valve on these. Those are available to buy still, so if you break the thermo valve, I think I might, re I have a thermo valve, I might replace it. I put an order in for more, just to make sure they're still available. So um, that's good, because those little nipples, they're plastic nipples like this and they break very easily. I've had quite a few people ask for those because they break so we'll see if mine breaks okay so now we're doing pretty good I think let's uh see if we can get the throttle cable off okay throttle cable has been released okay so the only thing we have are the fuel lines I'm pretty sure that's a fuel line took a picture of this so we know which which one is what top the top one is closest to me the bottom one is uh, closer to the cab ah, not a lot of fuel that's good so we're not getting too messy just Again, just twist the hose a little bit and break it. There you go. Carefully, because you don't want to pinch these hoses and cut them. Okay, so fuel came out the bottom one. Back towards the cab. Back towards the cab is bottom. Towards the rear. Towards the rear top. Back to the cab bottom. Towards top, back bottom. Just remember that. Okay. So we do need to, bummer, uh, loosen the throttle cable mount. So I wanna make sure I don't really move that because I don't wanna put that out of adjustment. I believe that's a 12 mil, which I don't have. So we'll, uh, we just gotta do the thermal valve. So that one's gonna be, so top, towards top, back is bottom. And then our thermo valve, that one's gonna be fun. Well, actually the one on the left, there's a hose on the left side, that's on the left. And the hose on the right, that's on the right nipple. So can't really mess that one up. So lefty and righty. This one, however, though, we need to be careful not to break the the nipple that one actually had a zip tie on the hose so I don't know if it was coming off at one point I might just replace that because I don't know maybe that could be a reason why it's not running correctly so a thermal valve was down there underneath the inlet of the carburetor um, I'll show you once we get it out, but I think everything's disconnected except the solenoids. 
but that's okay. I'll get the carburetor out of the way and then I can get to the how uh, harness. But first I need to undo that, which I think is a 12 mil, so I'll be right back. Okay, so obviously when we do this, we just wanna to try to rotate one so we don't throw it out of alignment. Hopefully I can just get the front one off. And then the back one will stay where it needs to. So back the front one off. I don't know, that one you probably can't do it, but back this one off until it gets past the threads and then the thing will slide off the posts past the, the threaded part. So, man, I think, I think everything's disconnected. I can't think of anything that would be connected except for the solenoids, of course. Um, which this one's still good, so I'll be sure to save that. That fuel cutoff may be bad, and that's the reason why it never ran correctly. But let's uh, get the post uh, loosened up here, which is a 14 millimeter. This is actually really fun. I'm not gonna lie, this is actually really cool. As long as you document it, you'll be a lot more confident putting it back together. But this is cool, I like this. I might not like it so much if it doesn't run, <laughs> but it's cool to get the brain, the heart of the the engine fixed, you know. Getting that old carburetor happy again. Okay, so I do, we need to disconnect. I need to get some picks so I can disconnect that solenoid harness. I had to go put sunshine back in. She walked down and chirped for my attention. So I got uh, the carb solenoid and fuel cutoff solenoid unplugged at the harness, pick, and uh, some pliers. Popped it right out, which you got to do if you ever replace your solenoids. So now we should, I think, come out. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it came out. Look at that. Okay, so I'll do some inspecting. Okay, so man, you can see that's really dirty and I don't know if it's really working. It's very slow. I'm not sure if that's normal. The other one I got is not that slow. So what's different about this one though, uh, it's got like this shield here. So I might take that shield off. I might take that shield off, put it on this one, but here's our thermo valve. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put a new one on. I have one, so I might as well put it on and I have more on order. But everything else, uh, I mean, I don't know. Everything looks good. The hoses down there, uh, hoses down there look good. All the vacuum hoses and everything. Man, if you gotta do a thermostat, now's the time to do a thermostat. That's real easy to get to that thermostat. Real easy. I wonder what this guy does right here. What the heck does that thing do? It looks like some kind of, it's like a water pump or something. I wish I knew everything about these engines. What is that? That guy right there kind of looks like an external water pump or something. Maybe somebody can chime in. But there's your thermostat right down here, your water sensor, water temp right there, sensor, thermostat. I did do a new thermostat on this one, so that's already good. Let's see the intake manifold. We're gonna have to get that cooling out of there, but there's our, so I have all these gaskets. So we're, I didn't even need to, I didn't even need to remove the vacuum advance. I don't know what I was thinking, but we'll get rid of that gasket. I should have that one, hopefully. Um, but let's see here, try to rearrange this. There's the inside of our intake manifolds. Not bad, I just want to get that cooling out of there so I don't suck a whole bunch down into the engine. But we'll get that cleaned up and we'll get that other carburetor put on. This is going a lot faster than I thought it would. 
like really fast. I haven't even been doing this for like an hour. So I'm gonna get the thermo valve from my office, get the other carburetor and do a little more cleaning. And then we'll put it all, we'll put it in and hopefully she fires up. I don't think it's gonna be right away since it is a new carburetor, but hopefully maybe tomorrow um, we can test it and see what happens. Okay, I wanna do a little Man, Waterloo is sponsor me. A little comparison. So here is the rebuilt one. So I mean, the outside isn't very clean, but I don't care. I'm more worried about the inside. So you can see that chamber's pretty, pretty clean. Here's mine. I mean, that thing doesn't really go back. If you push this thing, it goes right back. So I don't. This could have been an issue with maybe the choke not working, just gummed up. Here's our thermo valve. And then here is our brand new thermo valve, which I hope they still have them because I'm gonna end up using it. Maybe I'll save that one as a backup just in case if they're not around anymore. But here's our thermo valve. Obviously it works off of heat or something right here really sure but it, there it is brand new that guy just goes right into that threaded hole so put that in there now our new solenoids new cutoff solenoid so I think what I'm gonna do is we'll just leave it as it is put it in there and if it doesn't run right then we know we need to make some adjustments because it's really funky how everything is just a little bit different. So this may have been a newer carburetor. I'll have to look on my 95, to see what it looks like. <sighs> Interesting. Anyways, I'm just gonna put it in there, see how it runs. If it run runs like crap, then we'll do some adjusting to match that carburetor. But let's get, I'm gonna get that thermo valve in. gonna get that thermo valve in right there and start putting it back together all right let's start putting this sucker in there so we got my new gaskets here so the rubber and the hard plastic go right there and then this paperish one goes there so let's get that on there and ready to go. Also, I made sure the intake manifold was clean. I took any uh, juices that may have gotten in there. Let's get the uh, Get the uh, try to get the carb cylinder lines plugged in there before I get too far and can't get my hand in. Right, carb solenoids are plugged in. Put the lock washers and nuts on. Your I just want to make sure this is very tight. So obviously, we don't want the carburetor coming off. Okay, that's super tight. Okay, let's start putting hoses back in. We got our thermo valve. So make sure that we get the thermo valve plugged back in. They had a zip tied on the one thermo. So I'll just do it on the other one just in case. I don't want it to come loose. So 
Put one on the one nipple. Get it nice and tight. Got my flush cuts. My nice Harbor Freight flushy cutties. <laughs> Not so flush. But my defense, I couldn't really get in there. Okay. So the bottom was back towards the cab. Top towards the front. Okay. Now let's put these in a better location this time. Okay, so then this guy went to that fatty side of the solenoid. Uh, this guy went to the skinny side of the solenoid. And again, that just I learned the other day from Greg at JDM Car and Motorcycle. That controls the fuel, I think, fuel buildup like the pressure in your fuel tank. So if your car, sh your engine stops running all of a sudden, try try opening up your gas tank. It may let out, if it lets out a bunch of pressure, this solenoid might be bad and you're getting vapor lock, so it's not getting any fuel. So as soon as you let all that pressure out, I believe the engine should run again. Greg can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what it did. This guy goes into our choke pump. All right, I'm gonna have to look at my pictures because I already forgot, so I'll be right back. Okay, I've already found another issue. So on this one, we have two nipples, normal, normal style. This one we have three, like uh, Blade Runner, <laughs> whatever that movie was with Arnold Schwarzenegger. We got three nipples on this one, so I don't know what this one does. I'm going to see if it runs, if anything comes out of it. I may just plug it in hopes that plugging it works. Otherwise, this is called the Venturi cover. I'll take this Venturi cover off and replace it with that one since this plastic paper gasket should be okay. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Thank goodness it's not too difficult to remove the carburetor. But three nipples, two nipples, I don't know what's gonna happen. but. Continuing to put everything back together. We got our carburetor choke running to the front nipple on the intake manifold. Then the second nipple back on the intake manifold is this line. And then our farthest one out comes to the, with this like filter probably, or some kind of vacuum filter or something. Goes to the farthest front nipple. Um, and I checked and it runs underneath all the wire looms and then that clips there Vacuum advance. I got to put this back together and then put the cables back on but and then put the uh, Coolant lines back to our choke and then our intake. Yeah, still moving along here Okay, everything's back hooked up AC uh, accelerator or whatever you want to call that thing hooked up um, lines all on, intake tubing is on, hoses all reconnected, made sure the vacuum lines are in the right place. I looked at my pictures, thank goodness, because I got a little confused there, because there's, you know, there was one more nipple, so I was confused about, you know, that, which hopefully I, I have some vacuum plugs, I can just plug that, I'm hoping. Um, everything seemed to went back together okay, throttles hooked up, so... I'm going to hope that the float fills up, the float works, and she starts. So let's give it a try. Fingers crossed it works. I mean, I think I have it all hooked up correctly. I'm just not sure if the settings on the other carburetor are going to work with what this was set up for. So let's just hope it's all dialed in and she starts.
touching it, nothing's happening. second because I probably had to fill up with fuel but it usually dies after it starts but it, it just stayed so we'll uh we'll just keep an eye on it let it run for a little bit but oh my god I mean it just throttles up this is incredible better it revs up a lot better it started up a lot cleaner um, again it takes a, it was a bad example but it takes a long time to start she you know once it got going because I'm sure it needed to fill up with fuel in the bowl I'm gonna keep it I'm just gonna let it run and we'll keep an eye on it I mean there might it might need some like, idle adjustments or something because again this one is a little set up different than the other one but I'm gonna say it was a success. Cleaned it, it's running great. We'll take it on the street, see if it has a little more power and is more responsive. And uh, yeah, if you wanna do your carb, hopefully this will help you out. Or I think I'm gonna start slowly accepting um, carb clean and rebuilds. Um, I have some kits. I'm getting more gaskets and more accelerator pumps and more solenoids and all that. So it'll be a lot better. But, uh, yeah, this might be the end of the video. I'm going to take it out for a ride. And if it runs like garbage, then, you know, I'll say, hey, it sucked. But right now, I'm so stoked. <laughs> it's running great. So I'm going to take it out for a test spin and see what happens. Thanks for watching, guys. Watch part one to see how you take the carb apart. Part two, just put it all back together, how you took it apart. New carb, yeah, new gaskets and all that. And then reinstalling it is a lot. Taking out the carburetor is a lot easier than I thought. I thought it was going to be a nightmare. That was so, so easy to take the carburetor out. Holy cow. So hopefully you can do that if you're carbed and need to do some work. Because like, I'm telling you right now, it's running so much better. I think the uh, choke just shut off, so it's, it's idling normal now. Oh, I hate to do this little stupid plug, but it, I keep getting reminded by some people if you like the videos like it throw a comment on there you know i really appreciate feedback more ideas it helps boost the videos and the algorithms even if you just want to say what's up i really appreciate it i check comments on a regular basis i try to every day if i don't get too busy but i'll respond to 99 percent of them unless it's something irrelevant then that's okay thanks for commenting <laughs> but um like it Maybe your friend has a carburetor and he needs help, share it. That would just help the channel grow and that's what I'm trying to do and I would really, really appreciate it because I'm just trying to make this, you know, a little a little business to help out people with sandbars and acties and midgets by providing parts and also videos how to do it yourself. I know there's a lot of guys out there selling parts, trying to make a quick dollar um, and whatever. So be it. You can't. You can't stop anybody from doing that, but I'm trying to provide something a little better than just selling parts. I'm trying to provide videos, how-tos, um, so you can do it yourself and help you try to find the parts in Japan so you don't have to go through me for every single part, which is totally fine. Um, I get a little backed up anyways when that happens. So again, I really appreciate it, guys. Check out the website if you need any parts. Um, yeah, whatever. Subscribe if you're not. I'm trying to post stuff all the time, so hopefully it'll be helpful. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully see you on the next one.